Hey everyone, this is Magic Lover recording for the MTG Noob. Doing a little something different here. Um, Gatecrash just got fully spoiled, and just going to take a look at some of the interesting uh, cards that I think might impact Legacy to some degree. So, just going to walk through not all of them, since I'm sure I'll miss something, uh, or something will turn out to be a sleeper, but, you know, at first blush, these are the ones I think might find their way either in sideboards or main decks of various builds, or, who knows, even star in their own decks. So, anyway, um, starting off, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at our first one, uh, Blind Obedience. This is an interesting little uh, card in that it's a relatively cheap one white, one colorless enchantment has extort on it, so it does have the ability to, you know, ping your opponent for little tendrils. They lose a life, you gain a life action. Um, but it also has this uh, kismet ability of artifacts and creatures, you know, not lands and anything else, but they enter the battlefield tap. So, a couple interesting applications for this card. Thinking it might be an interesting inclusion. Uh, to Enchantress um, against like affinity or fast creature builds um, since it does offer a little bit of extra time since their creatures are coming in to play tapped and especially against affinity everything comes into play tapped it really hurts them it does give you a little late game reach too to be able to with that deck you know if you're drawing bunches of enchantments to be able to um, to cast them and uh, maybe finish the game that way and who knows, maybe this is the card that makes Stasis, you know, the second coming of the uh, Stasis deck viable. Since uh, Kismet is a 4-drop and doesn't give you Extort, and this does. Who knows, it's a long shot. I know I'll brew with it just for the heck of it, um, as it should be pretty cheap and uh, should be fun to play with. So, we'll give that a shot. Next up, we've got Gideon, Champion of Justice. Uh, this is, you know, as, as most Plane Walkers comes out, uh, and they do make a, a pretty big impression since planed walkers are in inherently pretty powerful. Um, I'm not sure where this guy fits in. Honestly, I just don't think he's better than Gideon 1.0. I, I mean, you know, to, to come out at 4 and go up to 15 automatically, he's got to be coming in against a deck like Belcher that hit Empty the Warrens or you know, elves, uh, you know, that, that just went off with a couple glimpses. The problem is both both of those decks are going to win be turn win before turn four. And uh, even if you do, <laughs> you know, tick them up that turn and they just untap and swing at you and kill you, you don't even get to use his ultimate. So I, I just don't know if this is going to be um, a, a great answer to those kind of decks. I, I'm sure White will find a home for this in grindy kind of decks where, you know, uh, someone plays a couple creatures, you put this out, ticks up to six, you can start swinging at them, um, but eventually you tick it up until you have a, um, you know, an Elspeth 2-0 kind of effect where you're you're wiping the board, leaving this, and then just beating them down with, uh, with you know, a, uh, a decent-sized Planeswalker. So, who knows, we'll, we'll see if this makes an impact. I don't think it'll be huge, if anything. Next, we're on to uh, blue and enter the infinite. I mean, pretty much this card is uh, is close to wizards. I think is going to print a card that just says you win. Uh, you know, for for twelve mana, you're pretty much drawing everything. You get an immediate reliquary tower effect, so you're not worried about discarding the end of turn, and you do get to put a card back on top of your library, so you don't deck if they make you draw a card or something like that. Uh, you know, this card. I don't expect to see it in show and tell omniscience builds because you know why not just put Emrakul out? Um, I mean this seems like just a huge win more. You know you, you show and tell omniscience, you then play this card, and you're gonna put an Emrakul or a uh, um, you know Living Wish for petals or or something. Or I'm sorry, a Burning Wish for petals or something. But you can pretty much do that anyway without having this being a dead card in your hand since you can't show and tell this. So I think it might be too frustrating to pack these in there, take spaces from other cards that are show and tell viable, um, since this only uh, combos out with Omniscience, and even then, you know, it, it will win if you cast it, obviously, but um, if you can't get show and tell for Omniscience going, it's like a three card combo, and that tends to be very unpopular in Legacy. Interestingly, this could be a card in Dream Halls. 
So curious if people will start brewing that. I've played against that a few times in my legacy career. Um, interesting build. It's very tricky to play, but this might be an, an interesting style um, you know, card for that kind of a thing since it's not an X spell. But I don't expect to see it in you know high tide or show and tell as I as I expect. They've got other finishers that uh, are better filled than than this. It is worth noting also that uh, in black, devour flesh um, is a another edict style effect, a diabolic edict effect, where it is a two mana, you know, one colorless, one black instant. Target player sacks a creature and gains life equal to its toughness. So interesting in that you know, unlike an edict. Um, in which you know target player just sacrifices a creature, um, or innocent blood, where you where it's a, um, a, a both effect. This can be used defensively. I mean, this might be used to get rid of a bob that's you know about to reveal something and kill you, or um, you know the this this has a little more reach to it. And it, it could just be edicts five through eight. Who knows? But this does give you know diabolic edict style attrition decks. Um, a, a vast multiple of, of edict style effects, which uh, could be push them over the top. We'll we'll see, but certainly this on a uh, Isochron Scepter could be a, a little frustrating to play against with a creature based deck. We'll we'll see if this uh, finds its way into that kind of a deck in Legacy. Moving on into red, um, about the only thing I see making it out of here into Legacy builds would be Skullcrack. I mean, it's it's obviously not better than incinerate its only damage to player so you know there, there's better uh, one red three damage to player but it does have the, uh, the the torment style effect here in that players can't gain life and damage can't be prevented both you know end of turn uh, effect so who knows maybe this comes in as a sideboard card against life gain types of decks um, or decks that you know are looking to prevent damage. Not that that's the the way out that most people fight against. You know, red deck wins, but who knows? This this might be a very interesting um, sideboard to answer anything that comes along the lines of those types of of sideboard answers to red deck wins. So, who knows? This I'm sure will be experimented with, and we'll we'll see if it finds a home in that that kind of build. Skipping green because I didn't really see anything in green that looks. Uh, to add much to the legacy scene, um, onto the multicolored Aurelia the War Leader. I've heard some discussion about this kind of replacing um, the Hasty Guy in Dredge's main deck for you know the the insta win. If it gave the army Dredge, I'm sorry, if it gave the army haste, probably. Since it doesn't, I don't expect this to be found in either Dredge or Reanimator builds. Um, Certainly, I expect to see it in, in Commander, but that's a different story. Um, so, pretty pretty powerful, uh, a pretty you know limited bomb. Certainly, I don't expect to see this um, as a target for cheating in Legacy. Now, Aurelia's Fury, on the other hand, this is a card I can get behind. I think this might have a place in Zoo, and here's why. I think it gives Zoo decks something they they pretty well lack. Um, I mean, it's an X spell. They're never gonna. Zoo's never really gonna have too much in play. But what it does do is, say, say Zoo, you know, late game hits this for for five, needing to break through. They get through a blocker, or they do, you know, two or three damage, two to two creatures on the opponent's side of the board, and one to that player. They tap the creatures, and silence the player. So this could be a very interesting solution to some of the things that vex Zoo. I don't know if it would be enough to make that, in my opinion, tier one again. But it is interesting that um, you know I'm sure this will be done for non-lethal, just to silence and tap opponents' uh, creatures and, and sneak through that Tarmogoy for Loam Line or Curd Ape or um, Wild the Cattle or something. But and maybe do that extra you know couple points of damage to the player. So we'll see if this uh, finds a home, but I expect this to be brewed in a fair amount of zoo builds, and we'll we'll see if it makes the cut. And speaking of potential additions to zoo style builds, another planeswalker comes at us, Domni Raid. Um, interesting in that you know comes in for three, so potentially um, you know a, a two drop with acceleration or a three drop, and this. 
could fit pretty well into something like Maverick if they splash red or Big Zoo. Um, but, you know, it's a way to get a little bit of card advantage by keep ticking him up and finding extra creatures. And a second ability to provide a little bit of extra reach in creature removal should be interesting. So we'll see if this guy makes the cut. Don't expect Salt him to be used often, but this is a cheap enough Planeswalker that any time a 3-drop comes in and has a good tick-up ability, I expect people to, to brew it. Quick note on this guy. Um, I've heard people say this is you know uh, the second coming of, of Dark Confident or Bob. Um, I don't see it, uh, you know, a four drop very different than a two drop for those style decks, um, and and that it does, you know, hit your opponent as well, but does give them the card draw. So uh, I just don't see this making a big impact in Legacy. And here's my pick for kind of a little goofy, doesn't look like much at first sleeper card from the set, High Priest of Penance. This is like Death Touch on crack. I mean, whenever it's dealt damage, destroy non-land permanent, so you get that um, that effect, that, that, you know, removal effect. Imagine swinging into this on turn two after your one of your lands got wastelanded and your remaining basic is going to get blown up if you throw your Tarmogoyf at this guy. Um, I just think it clogs up the board significantly, and... I expect him to, you know, either go farming or find people uh, untapped basics, you know, Swords to Plowshares, Path to Exile, because lightning bolting this guy, um, just are swinging into him. Not only is he going to, you know, take away the, the combat step for that guy and soak up the damage, but it's going to come back and blow up your favorite permanent, you know, a nice Vindicate effect. So, I don't know, I think Vindicate on a stick, on a creature, interesting combo. We'll see if this uh, makes its way into into decks and, and what effect it has, but this is my pick for, for Legacy Sleeper of the pack. Anyway, that's it for Gatecrash, and uh, anyway, as always, thanks for listening.